Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa neem al wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Asalaamu Alaikum. It's Friday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. And we're going to wrap up our, um, our Lent and also the Ramadan is, is, is on. I just pray that God will give us strength to push through. May our heart desires be granted in these period of piety. And may we learn to do a lot of good during these times. Mind you, this Sunday is also going to be the grand launch of the 80th anniversary of the St. Joseph the Work Anglican Church, the Maxi Cathedral, my own church. And it's going to be fun. Swell moment, 6.15 a.m. and 9 a.m. You've got to join and, and, uh, at, at the Kaneshi Runabout area. Just join us and, and uh, let's have fun together. Yesterday, I saw something at the National Theatre. And I, I think that I want to invite all of you to also come in and see it. Just, just play a bit of the, the Gods Are Not to Blame rehearsals for me. Mm. Johnny's bite. Having seized that man, I swear by this sacred arm of the womb that I shall straightway bring him to the agony of slow death. First, he shall be exposed to the eyes of the world and put to shame. So, so that's uh, one of the magic life. that George Quay and um, Nasho Ko put together at the National Theatre. The gods are not just keep it on there. The gods are not to blame. Yesterday it ran. Today it will run again at 7 p.m. and then on Saturday 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Just come and watch this. So this is magical. But there's there are a lot more uh, that you should see. And I, I think that for literature students. And uh, all those who are interested in culture. It's Ghana Month, by the way. Um, but we've Ghananized the, the gods are not to blame. And you need to come and see it. I think, honestly, that um, if we give theater a chance, um, we will make a lot of money. If we give theater a chance, we will tell our stories better. Just like the folks in Hollywood tell the American story. And you watch American movies and you think that Americans are invincible. And Americans are, you know, all in all. And they, I mean, the most powerful and uh, impenetrable and all of that. I think that if we take the actors serious, we take our dance and drama and everything serious, it would help us as a society, raking more revenue, while still having a culture and tradition uh, position. So kudos to George Kwe, Nashoko, all the, uh, the team out there, um, Atugate, and uh, everybody who played a part in it. And just, just a surprise we just spring up this evening. Come, so come, come, come and let's have fun together. <clears throat> now, yeah, yesterday, I wanted to have a conversation about the missing... Well, the NDC or the minority says the BVD, biometric verification devices. The Electoral Commission holds a press conference and says that, oh, no, they are not biometric uh, verification devices, but laptops. And the first question that came to mind is, will the Electoral Commission have come to tell us that it is not BVDs, but it is laptops that have been stolen? Would the Electoral Commission have come to tell us if the minority had not raised the question? And mind you, the BVD conversation has not ended. But would the Electoral Commission have organized a press conference to have told the people that it is not BVDs that got stolen or got missing, but in fact it is laptop or laptops? That's one. Number two, how did... A heavily guarded electoral commission office. Because, mind you, the electoral commissioner, Jean Adukwe Mensa, she has military guards. If you go to the electoral commission today, today as we speak, you will find that there are tanks, eh, armored tanks, in front of the electoral commission. The military are all over the place. The police are all over the place. So a heavily guarded place that is also termed as a national security location how did it happen that things are stolen from a heavily guarded place, a national security location? How? 
The third point is that has the Electoral Commission officially told the police that somebody has stolen from us or we cannot find some of our laptops that we use for our work? And so police, please start the investigation so that we can catch the thieves or the supposed thieves and deal with them as per the law. Has the Electoral Commission officially told the police? Or the press conference is enough? The fourth point is that can we, for example, have just one laptop that could have all the database of every voter in this country? Yes. Yes. You can have one computer that has the entire electoral register of the entire nation on it. Yes. So what if the laptops that go missing, of course, have the database of all Ghanaian voters? Did the Electoral Commission say anything about it? You see, we are going into an election. The Electoral Commission has given us every indication that the election will be free and fair and transparent. People have their doubts because at the last count, I say that the Electoral Commission should be considering, um, you know, filing for the Guinness World Record uh, as the Electoral Commission that declared the presidential res results more than, more than five times. They should be filing to win that award, to get that honor. At the last election, the results were declared God knows how many times. As soon as we finished, then spokesperson of the Electoral Commission, Silviano, was on her way to Denmark as an ambassador. So the Electoral Commission already has questions. At the last check, the Electoral Commission's ad hoc staff were forcing people to vote for candidates that they did not want to vote for in the Kumeoba election. At the last count in 2020, the uh, staff of the Electoral Commission was busy cutting, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, tearing off the one candidate's photo off the ballot sheet at the last check. So the sins of the Electoral Commission is still fresh on the minds of the people. And therefore, it doesn't lie in the Electoral Commission's mouth to say that, well, it is not what you say or what you think, but we are going to do better. Show the people that you can do better. How were the laptops stolen in a heavily guarded space? Has the Electoral Commission told the police? And what have the police said about it? Because it is a crucial matter. And how did they get stolen in the first place? Are there any suspects that have been investigated at this point? And would the Electoral Commission have come to tell us about those laptops if the minority had not spoken about the BVD machines? And at what point were the laptops stolen? Were they stolen before the Electoral Commission said in the past that they were not going to use the indelible ink? Or were they stolen after the Electoral Commission says, okay, we have heard you will use the indelible ink? I'm only asking simple common sense, harmless questions. At what point were the laptops stolen? Were the laptops stolen at the time when the Electoral Commission says, we are not going to use indelible ink for the coming election? Or we are going to use indelible ink. At what point was it, was it, was, was it stolen? At what point? And you know, the interesting thing about that indelible ink conversation is that he organized a private election, right? A party's election, the MPP's election, use indelible ink. Then you say the national elections, you were not going to use indelible ink. And I'm saying the Electoral Commission at every point, I forgot, I should have brought that in. When the late Justice V.C. R.A.C. Crab acted as Electoral Commissioner in this country, all he needed was a broad slate, chalk, at the Independence Square to write the results, and it was never in doubt. There was no ambiguity. How is it that now we have all the technology, you have all the resources, you have all the money, you have all the people you need, and yet we always have issues. We will, we will conduct elections in this country, we will use ad hoc staff, and it becomes a tall order to pay them. They will have to scream and kick and scream and kick before we pay them. 
Play, play the director of elections video. Play, play, play it. Johnny's of the electoral commission. The commission recently undertook routine servicing of its biometric voter registration kits. It was during this maintenance that we discovered the theft of five laptops from the biometric voter registration kits, not seven BVDs as erroneously stated. The stolen laptops cannot be utilized for voter verification or registration. It remains just a laptop. As such, they cannot be used to compromise our systems and undermine the credibility of the upcoming elections in December 2024. At the completion of every registration exercise, all data captured are erased from the laptops in a process termed end of life. We have a well structured and um, a well installed security system apart from the police who are there, apart from the national security who are there, the commission also has its own security. The commission has also beefed up the security uh, measures at where we are working. Johnny's right. So that's Mr. Tete. He used to be director of elections. He has served two electoral commissioners. And then he's serving now as, as a, a commissioner. So the third, Farijan, Dr. Farijan, Charlotte Ose, and now Jean Mensa. At the last check, we're talking about security and all of that. If you Google it, the Electoral Commission came to confirm to us that their website was hacked. Oh, yes, their system was hacked. You don't remember? 2016 election, don't you remember? Their system was hacked. Their system were hacked. They, they, they hacked them. They came to tell us. They themselves. And I'm asking today, have they notified the police that when they suddenly found out that there has been theft, have they notified the police? And I thought that there's, there's a director of IT and there's heavy security at the Electoral Commission's place. Now, the director of IT, has he, for example, been held for it? The people who work in that department, have they been held? Because it is not enough to come and tell us that, oh, it is just a laptop. It is not enough. Because it's not a disposable laptop. Sorry. If you want people to trust you and people not to ask questions, you don't do certain things. Because you're happy using the word erroneously put out. Yes, they may have put out wrong information. But that wrong information got you holding a press conference and got you talking. And I'm asking if somebody steals state property in your custody and you do not report to the police, what does that make you? And if the police hearing this is not also triggered, the national security, the, the state security apparatus, they are also not triggered to talk about trying to get suspects. There's a problem. All the religious leaders are quiet. Our own National Peace Council, quiet too. If you talk, they'll say, oh, you are hitting so hard. But you see the things that are happening. If on election day or prior to the election day or after the election day, confusion erupts, we will hear the same voices who are so loudly, loudly, loudly silent. We will hear the same voices telling everybody to cool temper. It's good for you to tell people to cool their temper. But say, kukru, kukru ni jaya, kike kike no sube jai. Newton said action and reaction are opposite and equal. His third law of motion. You cannot plant maize and hope to reap cassava. We are all helping for the institution of state to stand. 
if you have state property in your custody and five of the laptops have been stolen from a security zone, appreciate the gravity. The Electoral Commission places a security zone. The things kept in there are heavily guarded. I cannot just get up and walk into where the Electoral Commission keeps the laptops and the BVDs. I cannot just, I need authorization to do that. So when were the things stolen? How were they stolen? Who stole them? And I've asked a question. Were they stolen before we said we won't use indelible ink for the elections? Or were they stolen after we agreed that we we're going to use indelible ink? Have they told the police? What has the police said? Who has been picked up? I leave the questions. Now, this morning, you will have breakfast. Your children will have breakfast. Your parents will have breakfast. But know that not even a grain of sugar or a cube of sugar that you consume, and correct me if I'm wrong, is produced here. We were told that the Commander Sugar Factory will be inaugurated in the year after two successful test runs. Put that thing up there for me. Johnny's bite. Commander Sugar Factory. The president told us that it will be inaugurated, retooled Commander Sugar Factory to be inaugurated later in the year after two successful test runs. September 4, 2022, one day before my birthday, I remember this. Shelly Asiedu Ado's story. Because I was born on September 5. So September 4. He says the retooled Commander Sugar Factory has undergone two successful test runs as it prepares for inauguration later in the year. President Nana Dodankwe Kufuado at a meeting with the chiefs and people of Commander before an inspection of the factory said he was hopeful the factory will be inaugurated before the end of the year. 2023 has come and gone. 2022 itself ended. Keep their photo on. Now we are in 2024, March. When will the inauguration of Commander Sugar Factory happen so that we can stop importing the sugar? Because in this country, if it's not rice, it's oil. If it's not oil, it's sugar. If it's not sugar, it's chicken. Those are some of the things that drink deep into our pockets. I ask a simple question this morning. This promise that was made to the people of Commander, and knowing that we had spent $35 million of money that the taxpayer would pay back, the loan that we contracted, what has happened to the Commander Sugar Factory? Because in opposition, we were told that the people had gone to build a factory um, where the natural resource or where the, where the, what do you call the raw materials were not available. And it was a waste. And that we were coming to do it better and that we would do a test run and do another run. No problem. Where is the sugar factory? And what is it producing? And this morning, if the president decides to have his tea or coffee, would he be using sugar from the Commander Sugar Factory or some imported sugar from some place? This would have created jobs, no? I remember so well. We're told that jobs will be created. So where is the Commander Sugar Factory? And when is it going to be fully operational? If it's not going to be operational, tell us too. If it is going to be operational, let us know when exactly. Because this would have been the fourth time or so that we were told in 2022 that the Sugar Factory was going to be up and running. The last time I remember, we were told that it was going to happen in April 2021. Then it was postponed to 2022. And then later in September, we were told, oh, by the close of the year, 2022 is, has ended. 2023, no show. 2024, Q1 is almost done. First quarter. Where is our sugar factory? One district, one factory. Where is our sugar factory? Where is the sugar factory? Where? Where is it? I wrap up this conversation, and uh, I, I did some checks with the Lands Commission. And I got a Johnny's video bite. yesterday. I did some checks 
and they confess that indeed there are some people going around holding themselves as staff of the Lands Commission, but they in fact are not staff of the Lands Commission. Listen to watch this video. Who sent you? Who sent you? I just, I just finished and I said, who sent you? I, I just finished talking. Who sent you? Do you work with the Lands Commission? Come again. Do you work with the Lands Commission? Yes, I do. As what? Eh? As what? As what? Eh? As what? What do you do at the Lands Commission? You say you work with the uh, National Lands Commission, right? You know your sector minister, Abu Do you know him? Yeah, yes, It's I my do. friend. You work there? I used to be a former staff. So you don't work there? Come again. Do you work there? I work with Sanjay Lankor. And what's your full name? Yeah, Robert Kobla. Robert Kobla? Yes. And you were there, which department were you? Land Registration Division. And what was your staff ID number? No, wait, wait, wait. I will let them out. The police is outside. I'll pick you. And what's your staff registration number? Sir, put the phone down. Yeah, yeah, phone ready. What's your staff registration number? Hey, bring the phone down. So, oh, why, take it from why, me. Why, why, why? I said, I said, I said, what's your staff registration number? You said you went to the Lands Commission. You are bastard today. Eh? You, ba you said what? Say it. You said what? You were what? No, you were what? You said what? You were once what? I want to hear. Oh, you work with the Lands Commission. Just too much for me. Because you said you work there. You don't work there. Why do you? Why do you? Ah. But you work there. Why do you? Why do you confront me? Do you, do you work there? Make do you work there? Sir, do you work there? You don't work there. Move out. So, this is a message to the National Lands Commission. And also to us all as citizens to be vigilant. When somebody comes to you and says, I work at place A or B, check their ID card. If you have a way of verifying, be sure. Because I crashed stay by plan. See, he was confronted. Do you work there? He said, yes, I work there. What is your ID number? Who is your direct blah, 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 blah. It's fumbling. So I'm told that it's one of the Goro boys. Per my information I have from within the Lands Commission is a Goro boy. And you can only imagine the kinds of trouble that some of these Goro boys go ahead and give to people. Because there's actually desperation for lands now. There's desperation. The deficit of our housing issues. And so people will do just any and everything. So I need you to stay awake. Lands Commission, good morning to you. We are running a digitalized system. Such intermediaries are not needed anymore. I played just one video. On Monday, if God touches my heart, I'll play the others. Have a good morning.